There are a couple of scenarios that have been very typical, say, in American uh, elementary education or middle school education regarding art. And one of the scenarios is that, you know, we all sit in a room and we kind of secretly know that there's some small fraction of us that are, you know, geniuses, let's say, or really gifted, and the rest of us are kind of average. And that's a model that I think I'm really trying to react against. Somewhat in response to that scenario, you can have kind of a craft activities model where um, there's no real development of portfolio or of personal sensibility or even a, a classroom or studio culture. And instead it's like, let's be nice to each other by not delving into the depths of our own potential or the potential of art. So instead of those two kinds of scenarios, actively assessing how Sam is tending to learn today, Granted, we all have tendencies and propensities, um, and I think that part of making art well and understanding art well is continuing to grow, and develop, evolve in terms of becoming multilingual learners. There are a number of quotes that have been inspiring for me where it comes to revisiting wonder and not thinking about, say, Socratic wonder as some moldy, dusty thing, but rather something that can really energize our own process of life and of creativity and of empathy and of self-discipline and a sense of dignity. It's tempting sometimes to, when you hear a phrase with the word wonder in it, to think of it as a platitude. But what I've found is that in the experiences of these young people who are given secure time and space in which to rediscover themselves or maybe discover themselves much more simply that wonder really is an urgent thing for them and that art just happens to be a, a one doorway into that. The Rotary Art is Smart program is a response in part to the situation in the public schools where it remains to be seen whether or not uh, we will have effective arts education. Um, but it also goes beyond that and it relates to how a, a real healthy and fresh approach to teaching arts may have super important impacts on individuals and communities. Studiology is kind of my nickname for the approach. So much of what I would use with a college group can be brought over to a younger group. Teaching critical thinking by teaching arts. It goes both ways. We can teach the art of thought through teaching art. We can also teach uh, art proper by teaching critical thinking. Most of the time we don't put the ideas of critical or let's say analysis together with creativity, but for this approach, analysis is really a mode of creative work. So uh, often there's an active conversation among artists in academic settings about the difference between art and craft, or there might be even be kind of a false competition between it's the utterly necessary means. The difficulty with art education becoming craft activity is that there's a lack of a certain kind of conversation that both encourages, um, maybe inspires, and also helps students to be accountable within themselves for the difference between what they may want to accomplish and what is presently accomplished in a given project. And I think there's a real art to encouraging young people with a very matter-of-fact response to work in light of the fact that they can overcome any challenge, they can solve any problem. It's also a process of daily comparing very different kinds of images, um, whether it's comparing sculpture to painting or painting to drawing or, more interestingly perhaps, comparing the kinds of images that may not have a subject matter or an obvious reference to those that do. 
um, trying to figure out how students envision differences between different kinds of images and so we'll go take a museum trip and try to ask certain kinds of questions and use our questions to get closer and closer to not just the images that we appreciate and make but also to the kinds the, the very different processes that are in the room among peers. I think that in the discussions that we have about art projects and products, um, there are plenty of opportunities for wisecracks and disrespect and all kinds of negative things. And it's up to the teacher to kind of um, somehow gently quash all of that and redirect the energy towards a serious view of what's at hand. Now, you can't really do that on day one of a, a critique discussion, but what you can do is you can develop a sense within each self um, that each one has something to share. And when they begin to develop respect for themselves and for the projects that, that are at hand, then it's interesting, the discussion changes and it's as if there's more time that each individual can give to a process of respecting the other enough to really look at what he or she has been thinking about because all of those thoughts are in a sense recorded in the creative decisions that are the art project. When people um, have enough space and time to discover their own rich potential, um, they, take, they begin to take all kinds of processes and exchanges a whole lot more seriously. And more to the point, they discover a dignity within the self that they begin to project onto others. And so they begin to be able to make time for others. There's a particular notion of empathy, I think, that gets cultivated and grown in this kind of an environment. There's less proneness to respond to uh, difficulty or possible conflict with more conflict. Rather, the response is a little more empathetic, a little more imaginative, creative. And at the basis of it, there's this idea of automatic innate value of each individual. And maybe the process of making something with our hands and with our perception at the same time uh, and beginning to discover that there is such a thing as meaning that we can share through art.